Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I uh, have a handful of Marvel characters, two new Marvel characters to talk about, and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to surprise you a little bit with my take on these, but uh, before we get there, I wanted to point out kind of the hilarity, uh, just really quickly, as we're now getting official word from some of the SNL cast members uh, uh, regarding their feelings on Elon Musk hosting. And if you've been following uh, social media, you've heard a lot of comic creators in particular talk about how, uh, oh, the cast members are hate this and, and they definitely, their, their sources, wink, tell them that the cast members are angry and they're not going to show up. And who was it? Was I was a Matt Rosenberg who was off asking um, Jeff Bezos, of all people, to give the cast members like a million dollars to not appear with Elon Musk. I mean, just kind of uh, some odd choices. I apologize it wasn't Rosenberg who did that. Uh, I know he did the Flint, Michigan water thing with, with Musk. I, I don't remember who did it now. Um, at any rate, what do we hear from uh, Pete Davidson? Uh, yeah, the cast uh, has no plans of uh, not showing up, and they all don't really understand the controversy. In fact, the exact quote is, uh, everybody said we don't understand why this dude, everyone is so freaked out about. We were like, what did he do? He's just like a really wealthy businessman that makes like nerd shit. I don't know. He's really nice. I'm excited. Aww. Anyway, I have no real stake in the game. I, don't, I haven't given Elon Musk any money. I don't particularly care, but I do find the hysteria. We need more of this kind of stuff, the debunking of these social media myths that we really need some of that because that it will, it will shut a lot of this nonsense up. Um, at any rate, <clears throat> this week we got the announcement of two new characters in Marvel. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the Somnus uh, in a moment. That's the new LGBTQ, which very tackingly is being uh, debuted on a variant cover. Uh, which just just screams dumb gimmick, but we'll we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but the other character is the Captain America of the Kickapoo tribe, and uh, just in case you're like, uh, is this the Kickapoo sounds remarkably fake? Uh, no, it is not. That is a real tribe in Kansas and I believe Oklahoma, um, kind of in that region of the country. It's a real tribe of Indians. Uh, they. Uh, they are Native Americans, I should say, um, and they are very much a real thing. So not not a fake not not a fake Indian tribe that they're doing here. Um, the the character is, is called Joe Gomez, and uh, he is the uh, shield bearer. Um, you again, one other thing you might say, Gomez. That doesn't sound uh, like a Native American name. Actually, for that tribe, it it, it is it is uh, authentic. So you know, give it give it to give, uh, that is true. Um, this is, uh, the, the costume is a bit much, uh, in my opinion, but it is uh, probably the best of the three. We've seen the uh, Captain America, the unhoused. We've seen the, uh, Captain America. What was the, what was the second Captain America? I don't remember what her, um, her mandate was, but they, they did decide to just leave a leg off of her costume for no apparent reason. I'm sure there's a great reason for it. Um, and if you've been listening to my videos, you know, my problem with this whole thing is, no, it's not that they're introducing these other Captain Americas. I do think it's it's a bit silly. I think it takes away from the characters. Honestly, I think they'd have more longevity if they weren't seen as a gimmick, if they actually took these characters and, and didn't capify them. I think the, the likelihood that we'll see them again get stronger if they were to do that. Um, my, my problem with this whole storyline continues to be the, uh, the dumb premise, which is Captain America has lost his shield and he's uh, driving around the country trying to find it, along with uh, Sam and Bucky and, uh, and John Walker. So I, I just find that premise stupid. Um, I think it, this is the part that may surprise you. I, I think that in many cases, you know, Marvel has done a lot around different diversity efforts and, and all the rest. But the Native American uh, representation inside their comics has been relatively small. Uh, they've, they've, yes, they tried a Red Wolf title for a brief period of time, and they've done other little things from here and there. But I'll tell you this from experience, and I know a number of comic shop owners, and I had a ch one of the shops that I owned was down in the Colorado, New Mexico region. There you have uh, the Navajo tribe and a couple other uh, Ute is, is in that area. Um, and those the tribes, the Native Americans who live there are... Uh, are extremely big comic fans. A lot of them are were were I mean very loyal customers would buy a lot of that stuff and and really enjoyed it. It was uh, it was something that worked uh, for you know for members of the tribe. Not not to generalize. I'm not saying everybody loves it, but it was a uh, it was definitely a, a very active audience. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. But uh, you know if you were to make a character and, and try and appeal to a Native American audience, 
you have a bit of a trick in the sense that the tribes do get very territorial. So if you introduce an Apache, uh, then, you know, the Navajo may not accept it. But regardless of all that, um, it's, it's, an, it's an open market. And it's been always kind of surprising that uh, Marvel or DC, they, they really haven't gone after that audience. Uh, Turok did well and particularly well in that area. Uh, that was one small effort. Uh, you know, the it, back when we were, we were doing comics, I mean, they loved the the X-Men titles. They loved the Punisher. The Punisher sold incredibly well uh, to the Native American market. And so it, it just, it, it's a bit surprising that that Marvel has never really highlighted this. And and unfortunately, my feeling for this, uh, this Captain America here, it's, um, I, it, my suspicion is we'll see this Captain America in the backup story. Um and we won't see this Captain America again, or, you know, he'd get trotted out every two years or so kind of as an afterthought. And I think here's an area where uh, rather than do this kind of gimmick, uh, because the other piece, and I, again, I'm, I'm not entirely certain about this. I can only speak from my experience with the tribes that I've interacted with. Uh, the, the idea of putting America colors on traditional native America gear, um, the, the, at least the tribes I know would have been much more, um, interested in having their na- you know the nation's colors represented their uh, reservations uh, their their territories um, colors represented you know the Navajo Nation would have preferred their 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 symbols and everything else I, d- I don't know <laughs> I don't know how well that's gonna go over but regardless um, you know I think it's a market so it's a it's a it, you know I, I'm being uh, like I like I said this costume is is overdone there's a lot going on there and I have to believe that if it didn't have, you know, all these era, era, these elements, and if it wasn't just so hooked to Captain America, there's a decent chance it would go over, uh, that it would work, because uh, again, this it's a it's it's really an untapped market. There's been very little attention there, and I think there's a lot of interesting stories. You can tie into the mysticism. You can tie into uh, the history. There's just a lot. There's a lot of, of material there that uh, they just ignore. But yeah, there you go. Just just I'm just saying. Uh, the other new character, uh, we got word. Oh God! Uh, when I I posted a video about a week ago of this uh, this variant cover where they did the uh, Marvel 20th anniversary um, tribute, but only with LGBTQ characters around the edge, and we are promised that they'd be debuting a new LGBTQ character in the middle, and it it still has this kind of tacky feel to it. Um, not the character, just this 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 process. It feels too much like it's like we're gonna. There's a new Pokemon that's going to be released next week. It's, it's kind of, it, it, it feels, um, yeah, it feels just kind of gross when it's like, we, we're giving you another LGBTQIA character coming, uh, coming in this variant. It, it just is, it's a weird way of doing it. Okay. But put that aside, uh, the new character is named Somnus. Uh, the costume is fine. Uh, it's, it's, it, it looks to be at least some kind of tie to Olympian mythology. Uh, Somnus is the Olympian god of sleep. Maybe this is the new iteration of Sleepwalker, or maybe this is a uh, was it Night Mask, Dark Mask. Uh, it, maybe they're they're doing something there. I, I don't know. Or maybe this is just Marvel's attempt at uh, at their version of the Sandman, uh, the the Vertigo character. Um, at any rate, there's a little bit of a tease saying who was Somnus as opposed to who is, indicating maybe he's dead or he's. Uh, he, he's faded from memory or, or what have you. And I'm saying he, uh, this, this could be a trans character. It could be a non-binary, I, who knows? So, uh, no offense intended. Um, I do not have enough information at this point to say, uh, what it is. Um, they, they are, the article says that, uh, we know they are queer and, uh, they're, they're using the word, uh, they, there. So maybe, maybe news Rama knows more than I do at, at any rate. Um, again, uh, you know the, the 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 trick here is that I, I I hope that as they're putting these things out, there's a thought process, a real thought process to what are you going to do with this character a year from now. So picture one year from now, where is this character? How have they appeared? What's the arc look like? Because otherwise, uh, this stuff comes out for an anthology that honestly is not going to get uh, too much of sales, and. It, it then just kind of disappears and and then we uh, were reminded and, and and then people get mad like why these characters aren't supported well there needs to be an end game or at least and not necessarily an end game but it's like some kind of future plan otherwise we're just tossing these characters out uh, with no real thought to, to where they go in the future uh, you know 
we'll see. Um, they were supposed to get more information on about Somnus, and maybe this is a character that's that's gonna they're gonna do more with. Hopefully, so hopefully so. I always hope this with all characters, and I know that there's a habit within the comic fans uh, who are frustrated by this kind of stuff to just hate everything that comes out. My hope with all of them, including the Captain America, the unhoused, like all all all, all cap all these characters. My hope is always that there's some plan because to to roll something out, to put some attention by it, to get a writer and artist, all that kind of stuff put together and then just kind of have it meh, um, you know, forgotten within a month. Uh, that, that feels like a big waste. And it just feels like we're at that point just cranking out an absurd amount of IP, none of which sticks. And then I, I don't know if anything's getting really helped just to be drawn in a comic book. Honestly, it's not that big a deal. A lot of people can do it. You can go to Kablam or one of those kinds of services. You can put out your own comic book with whatever character you want for under a thousand dollars. You can do it now. Just getting in print isn't enough. There should be a there should be a plan. So, question to you: uh, Are you interested in Somnus? What's Somnus' story? Are you interested in learning more? How about the uh, you know the the Captain America of the Kickapoo tribe? Are you interested in that? Are you interested in neither? And uh, and then separately. Uh, if you can kind of, both of these things are gross to you. You're just not interested. I am, I am curious to hear your thoughts. Why hasn't uh, Marvel or DC, why haven't the comic companies done more to, to roll out something for the native American tribe, uh, you know, the, that audience, uh, in the U S it, it feels like a really natural, obvious one. Um, and, and weirdly underserved. I, I, I don't get it. I, I can only say from my experience, there's a lot of money there. There's a willing audience, but very little content for them. Anyway, let me know your thoughts below. Uh, like and subscribe, and thanks for listening. Like and subscribe, or this creepy squishy eye painted who's completely white and has black eyes, which is like super, super, super creepy, will come into your bedroom and haunt you for life. I'm not kidding.